welcome back to my channel so it's been a while since I've actually been on YouTube again it's been about a year or over a year actually and I kind of just want to get back into the swing of doing my YouTube videos and I have several um, topics that I think will help a lot of women so I wanted to share those with you all so one of the first topics that I'm gonna be discussing today is going to be about how to level up your feminine hygiene routine so um, there's some um, some things I recently incorporated into my hygiene routine and also um, overall I feel like a lot of women are kind of starting to get on the bandwagon of like natural feminine hygiene yoni steaming and all that good stuff so I just wanted to give you all some of my tips and tricks to just have your yoni on point and to have um, just have yourself confident to, to make you more confident and just to teach you some things that maybe you weren't taught as a woman um, even if it's some teenage girls watching this video we all can help each other and if we discover some things that may be of help to another woman why not share them so i kind of came up with a list of things so i'll be kind of looking down um, at my list to make sure i don't forget anything so for the first tip or trick or point that i want to discuss is bathing more than you shower a lot of women like to shower which is fine but you're not really um cleansing your yoni as well with a shower um they're fine from time to from time to time in my opinion but soaking in a hot tub or a warm bath is just a better option for women and while um soaking in the tub ablution is a good technique to use and ablution is when you just lean back in the tub and you allow the water to kind of rush into your vaginal canal canal and it essentially flushes it out and i know so many women are like well the vagina is self-cleaning and all this blah 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 look with the diet of most women the sex practices of most women um the cleaning practices or cleansing practices of most women ablution really can help um, unless you're just eating an all natural diet and you're using all natural products and your man is, you know, eating good and all that kind of stuff like that, this can really help a lot of women um, to incorporate baths and ablution, which again is just to lean back in the tub and you're kind of leaning back in the tub and as you're leaning down, you're opening your legs and you're allowing the water to flow in and it's able to flush out the vaginal canal. And also, you can take your finger, clean finger while you're in a tub, and kind of um, go inside to kind of pull out any debris, any discharge, anything like that, just to further flush it out. And you'll be a lot more fresh and confident doing that. Because if you're always just taking a shower, you're only essentially cleaning the outside with water. Um, of course, no soap in the inside, but the water is just getting on the outside, and that means that like when was the last time your vaginal canal was uh, was flushed and of course we're not supposed to douche and things of that nature but this is just a better method of method of being able to um clean the vaginal canal without douching or anything like that in a way that wouldn't throw off your ph um secondly to that i want to add adding sea salt to your baths so i add in pink himalayan sea salt to my baths and it's not something i do on a special occasion it's something i do every day every time i bathe i add sea salt that's a part of my normal routine and it just helps to kill bacteria it helps to keep the ph balance of the vagina in check and it's also good for your skin as well and it just helps you to feel more fresh and clean with a warm warm to hot bath with sea salt um, that really helps my third tip is to switch to a all natural yoni wash um, so I do not use like the Vagisils and the Summer's Eve and all that kind of stuff I don't use any of that I use strictly natural um, I used to use a brand called uh, organic but now I've switched to a, a different brand called Kuchiwa which is from a black owned business um, you should check her out it's femmagic.com she has excellent products she has um, a product called Vagilixer which is like a a medicinal type of serum but the product I'm specifically talking about is Kuchiwa which is a vaginal wash and it's awesome there are so many others 
organic is awesome and it's cheap it's like less than six less than, less than six bucks on amazon get that two-day delivery um pretty much any you know they have the um honey pot they have one from nini organics um they have all different kinds um it's different kinds so just make sure you're using something gentle something all natural on your vagina um even like uh was it Castile soap, like Dr. Bronner's soap, I heard was good. Um, I know some women say they use baby wash and all that kind of stuff. To me, using baby wash is the same thing as using Vagisil. There's still a lot of different chemicals in there that it's not natural. So just because it's a baby wash doesn't really necessarily mean that it's gentle like that because most babies who use, who don't use natural products, um, they still have skin conditions. So I say use something completely natural. Um, something so gentle you can use it in your face, your whole body, your baby, and it's all natural for your yoni. My fourth tip is to use your hands instead of a towel. So clean hands is going to be the best bet to make sure you're not transferring any bacteria or germs from this, you know, towel. Unless you're switching your towel out every time you wash down there, which can be time consuming with laundry. I still prefer my hands because they're more gentle than a towel. I used to use baby towels back in the day, but I still find that I get a better clean um, and I just have less issues when I use clean hands. And you're able to just feel around to make sure you get more familiar with your body when you're using your hands as opposed to a towel on your vagina, of course. Mm, let's see. Next, I would say, which I think is my fourth tip, is to drink at least a liter or more of water a day quality water a liter of a liter or more of quality water a day not just i mean if you only have tap water then that's just what you have and it's fine it's better than drinking something you know soda and stuff like that but if you can afford it invest in a good spring water or a good alkaline water i like essentia that's my favorite um i like the taste of it and it's just my favorite water and that's what i drink um i don't consume any other waters um yeah and drinking enough water a day of course we always hear that but truth be told it really just helps to we know to flush the system but also like if you if your body's dehydrated then you're holding more toxins in and of course you're holding them in more down there as well so if you notice like your urine is darker and stuff like that then your system needs more water and you can be holding on to odor more because your system isn't flushing itself the way it needs to because you're not drinking enough water and I've had that issue with drinking enough water like I'm supposed to. So I have to keep myself on a water drinking schedule and so I can remember to do it. And then also, um, because if you just do it, I may not be thirsty enough to drink enough water that my body needs. So I put myself on a schedule. Usually, like if I'm at work, then I'll just drink however much I need to drink that during my work schedule. And then anything after that will be additional. Um, you know, any type of fruit juice or more water at that point. Um, so again, I can't stress enough, not only water, but the quality of water you drink is important as well. And you can also incorporate more water by your diet. So I can, I guess I can, with, with this is a, with the fourth or fifth, I don't know, I'm going to stop, I'm gonna stop counting <laughs> at this point because I forgot. But, uh, with the water, um, we can go ahead and segue into eating healthier. So I also eat, you know, a lot of greens and fruit and fruit juice. So I drink like pineapple juice because I just prefer that. I used to drink apple juice, but I prefer pineapple. Um, I drink a lot of, well, eat a lot of greens and fruit, watery fruit, um, fruits and veggies and stuff like that. So this additional water you're getting on top of the water you're drinking is in your diet. So if you have a, a water rich diet, then you're also, you can add in that water from what you're eating. Um, changing your diet so i know people hate to talk about this kind of stuff because it's something that we know to do but if you're walking around self-conscious of how your vagina smells um just you know when in regular like when if, you, if you're like going to the bathroom and you don't smell good when you when you're pulling your pants down sitting on the toilet or if you find yourself not smelling good during sex or if you find yourself just not smelling as fresh as you would like to even on like a sweaty day a hot day which of course everyone gets sweaty but um you shouldn't smell foul, foul or stinky like you know unless you know something's going on and one way to come the one reason why you're probably having issues with that is because of what you eat 
and I know it can be difficult but what you eat does make your vagina and your body in general but we're going to speak to, uh, stick to the vagina makes your vagina smell different ways depending on what you consume so if you're a heavy meat eater eating hot chips juice all the time bread like sandwiches with white bread or even wheat bread if you're um, always eating pasta like regular wheat or flour based pastas if you're you know always um, a lot of alcohol a lot of um, sugar then you're not going to have the freshest vagina and I know a lot of women tend to say um, this is between me and us girls let me be honest with you so when so many women say oh well I don't have any complaints my man has a complaint or none of the men I've been with have complained but when they get with a woman who has a healthy diet they know the difference so they probably have all only dealt with you know women who don't have healthy diets and they themselves don't have healthy diets so beyond that like just know there is a difference and so many things that we're used to because we don't live healthy lifestyles that we think is normal which is normal but it's not healthy and normal is just something that occurs a lot right that it just becomes like a, we become desensitized to it but is it healthy for us so there's just a difference you know with the body odor and diet just know that if you're eating unhealthy and even if you eat some healthy foods like garlic and onions and stuff like that you can notice that your body smells different you just have to be you have to pay attention to that but uh eating a poor diet is going to contribute to your body having a, a foul a foul or a, oh a foul odor um your you know your you know that our organs are you know bladder and all that good stuff colon and vagina are all together so if you have a foul intestinal tract then you're going to have a foul smelling vagina most likely so it's good to flush your body by eating healthy drinking enough, enough water as well um let me see another tip i have is to okay so for me i don't use tissue i use flushable wipes that's all I use. Um, to me as a woman, it's just, it's like a mini wash up every time you go to the bathroom. So to use wipes, you're gonna clean, you know, you're gonna get a deeper clean everywhere, wiping away discharge, sweat, vaginal secretions, all that stuff down there. And you're gonna be clean, you're gonna smell fresh, and you're gonna feel fresh. If you're only using tissue, you're not cleaning anything. You're just dabbing it off. But there's still traces of it on your skin so it's still traces of poop which to me personally unless it's like an emergency and you have to you know go to the bathroom and poop while you're at work then I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute but uh you should be wiping with wipes when you're away from home and at home because you're actually removing everything um uh, if you don't then you're essentially just keeping everything on you and that's where that uh <laughs> This is too. This is kind of like weird to say, but I've I've seen this recently in a meme on a social media, and where guys call it like pissy vagina. Like in the morning, your vagina smells pissy. It's because you're just peeing and then you're wiping, you're dabbing it or wiping it with tissue, but you're not really getting it. You're not getting the trace amounts of urine off you. So you want to make sure that you're using wipes, flush, flushable wipes, so you won't clog your system. Unscented flushable wipes. If you could find unscented water wipes flushable water wipes they'll be awesome but if not um, flush, um, unscented flushable wipes and get in those crevices get in the you know labial folds all that good stuff under the clitoral hood all that stuff get it all because that's gonna hold urine vaginal secretions discharge all that stuff right sweat so it's still smelling fresh you feel fresh you're confident you know you smell good because we have a lot of women walking around here <laughs> who act like they can't smell themselves right and sometimes we have things that happen. Sometimes some, you may come down with a case of BB and not even know. And everything could, could have been fine that morning. And then later on you leave and you smell something. That's why you have to also be very in tune with your body. Know what triggers your body. And always be aware of your smell. So yeah, flushable wipes is a thing. And I suggest I have a little kit I keep with me. I keep, you know, my wipes. I keep, you know, suppositories if I need it. Um, of course, panty liners, pads. 
Um, and I also have, which I'll go ahead and segue into this, I have a bidet, a, a affordable bidet that I keep. Um, well, I actually haven't even, uh, I don't keep it with me all the time. But when I need to have it with me, I will. And that's just to flush. A bidet is really good in the summer months when it's really hot and you're sweating all the time. Or if you're a sweater in general, keep it with you. And during your time of the month to just rinse away that excess blood. You have your baby wipes but you may need an extra little flush you know and it's just you can just put cool water and just flush it and even a drop of your uh, feminine wash uh, inside it shake it up and then some rinse you know down there and flush away that that debris so that it can just be fresh and clean i know at the end of the day sometimes you know we tend to feel like oh i need to get in the shower i need to freshen up and that's normal but you should not be stinky at the end of the day you shouldn't be smelly if you're smelly at the end of the day or any part of the day and there's nothing wrong with your vagina then you're not cleaning it properly and you're not eating well it should not smell and i feel like so many women are used to having a vaginal odor that they think it's normal it's not normal which i'm going to also segue into uh menstrual menstruation so a lot of women have uh foul odor like foul smelling menstrual blood and it's something that you know a lot of women have considered to be normal which it is normal because so many women go through it but it's not healthy and it's a sign of things going on in your body your menstrual blood should not stink you should not be blowing the bathroom up when you use the bathroom after your period or during your period if your blood is smelly then that means that's contributing to your diet. Aside from if you have, and I mean, when I say smelly, I'm not saying like if you have BB or something like that. That's a whole nother issue. I'm saying if you don't have any type of yeast, yeast infection, STD, or bac bacterial vaginosis, but it just doesn't smell good, then it's probably because of your diet, because your menstrual blood should not stink. And when you, when you start to eat healthier, you're going to notice that your menstrual blood smells like blood. It smells iron, like, like iron. And it doesn't have a foul odor. A lot of women, you know, are walking around on their periods. And when you walk behind them in the bathroom, it smells horrible. And it's probably because they're, on, they're only using tissue to wipe. So they're going, even if you're changing your pad, you still have all this old blood on you. Urine, sweat, discharge, vaginal secretions. And then if you're, if you're pooping and you're only using tissue, then you have that on you too. And that's just a mixture for a disaster. So, of course, change your diet, drink more water, stop eating all these bad foods, y'all. It's not worth it. It is not worth it, I'm telling you. I know it's difficult, and I've had my times of relapse, but this is the time for us to go ahead and just make a change. Especially as black women, because we tend to have a lot of issues, a lot of reproductive issues, fibroids, and cysts, and all this, and cervical issues. And it's because of, of course, like birth control and stuff like that, but that's a whole different subject as well. But also what we eat and what we use to cleanse ourselves and the kind of pads we use and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, during your menstrual blood shouldn't smell. If it does, that's a sign that you need to not just change your pad more often, but you need to change your diet, drink more water. You need to switch up your hygiene routine and you need to change the kind of pads you use because the kind of pads you use, pads, tampons, Panty liners, all that kind of stuff can, could be contributing to why you have a strong foul menstrual odor. So I, of course, only use uh, organic cotton pads, and I've been using it for years and years and years. And um, I also use a menstrual cup, but I've switched back to pads because I noticed that, um, to me, just I prefer, like, I love them, I, and I will continue to use a menstrual cup, especially, like, for vacation or... You know, if I'm going to work out or just something where I just need, I don't want, I just want extra protection. But I feel like it is healthier to just let the blood run out as opposed to holding it inside your body with a tampon or a menstrual cup or those flexible discs. I know they work for women and there's absolutely nothing wrong. But you can throw your pH off easily with that. Um, depends on your body. If you have your blood sitting in there too long, then it could easily throw your pH off and... To me, that's just not a good thing. It's not worth it to have to. Because a lot of women's periods throw their pH off every month anyway. Because, of course, 
menstrual blood is, is a different pH than, uh, than your vagina. So it can cause your pH to be thrown off. And then you couple that with a tampon or a menstrual cup, then yet yeah, you're probably going to have, you know, some issues. It's pretty much up to you. And I know that some women are like, I just can't have a pad on me all day. And I get it, you know. But one thing too, if your period is so heavy that you have, that you just feel like you're just wet all the time. Like, of course you're wet because you're, you're menstruating. But if it's just so heavy, that's an issue that you need to, like, Heavy menstruation is not, it's normal, but it's not healthy. It's a sign of something wrong. And mo most likely, it's blockages, it's your diet, it's stress, it's the lack of water, quality water. All those things could be contributing to you bleeding healthy birth control to the point where you feel like you gotta wear, because some women are saying they gotta wear like the pins and stuff like that, mixed with pads and all this kind of stuff. Because they're bleeding so heavy, that's not healthy, y'all. That's not. Don't let that be your normal, okay? But uh, I, you know, I switch back to just pads because I feel like that it just keeps my yoni happy to so just have free flowing blood as opposed to like keeping it up there and then changing it, having something inside my vagina. To me, the only thing that needs to be up in there is my man <laughs> and um not all this other stuff which i get women use it some women don't have an issue if you don't have an issue fine but these are just my tips and tricks to just level up that, that um your yoni your yoni hygiene routine um let's see oh and um well i just spoke about this but to reiterate organic cotton tampons panty liners well if you're going to use tampons, organic cotton, of course, a silicone, um, menstrual cup, and organic cotton pads and panty liners. I use the organic brand. I love it. I've noticed that I've used so many because I've been I've been using only, like all natural uh, feminine care products for years, and I've tried so many. I was using them before they became a thing, whether it's some I ordered or found in stores. And the ones I like the most are organic brand. And I like those because I noticed that even with the natural cotton or the organic cotton menstrual products, they tend to, they don't mix with well with my body chemistry. And I think they could be the case for other women. It's like, they're supposed to be organic cotton, but as soon as you get like, it, as soon as it's, it's touching your vagina, you may sweat or discharge or anything like that it's just it doesn't smell good it doesn't it gets irritating and I just feel like that it's not supposed to do that when it's organic cotton so I've been experimenting and I feel like that some companies still they must say some of the the plastic or which it shouldn't be but whatever it is within the, like the backing the adhesive backing and the cotton it still has some type of chemical component that isn't good and it's just it did so it's like a lot of brands I've used and the only ones I really liked is organic because I feel like that their uh, their feminine wash their pads and their panty liners are awesome awesome and affordable and they're just they do the job they keep you fresh they don't have this weird weird smell with your body chemistry or anything like that um, and then some of these, I noticed that the natural natural pads and tampons, well, natural pads and uh, pa uh, panty liners, they break away. They start to rip apart. The more moist they get, the weaker they get. And or, the organic brand has not did that to me at all. So I recommend that brand. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, YouTube. You can find it on uh, Amazon. And the organic, I get like, I think they have a 60... A 60 count for like $24.99. I'll just get the box of 60 pads. And they last me probably like two or three months. And I just reorder those every two to three months. And it works well for me. And also, if you're a person who, like, um, a lot of natural brands don't have true overnight. If you are a little bit heavier overnight or you just need it to be extended, like those longer ones. I double up and just make <laughs> one long one. I put two. Uh, top and two, well, one at the top and one at the back, and make a long one, and that works. And I know some people probably don't think of that, but that's just an easy way to make you overnight if you just need that extra protection. Let's see. Okay, so 
another tip I would say is to go without underwear as much as possible. If I'm not um, wearing pants or menstruating, I'm pretty much not wearing underwear. And that just allows her to breathe and not be irritated by underwear. And some women are like, well, you know, I, I get too moist down there to go, you know, without underwear. And I say to combat that, you can you will combat that by when you have your baby wipes. If you go to the bathroom or your flushable wipes, go to the bathroom and you're using your flushable wipes, you are essentially cleaning away all that juiciness. And if you have to, after you clean away with the baby wipe and get it good and clean, you can dab it with paper towel, well, paper towel, with tissue, just to absorb if you are that moist, to absorb the moisture, like letting, patting, letting it sit so it can absorb some of that moisture, and then you should be good. Especially if you're like wearing dresses and skirts, you'll be able to get some air up in there. So I suggest that. Wearing panties 24-7 to bed and out and outfits and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't allow it to, your vagina to breathe. And I would say, too, the kind of panties you wear, of course, we know to wear cotton panties and, if possible, white ones. I don't wear white, so, I mean, I broke that rule, but this is my rule. But um, um, I only wear briefs. And I like those because, like, boy shorts and thongs and all that, anything that's going to be in, in your vagina, all up in there is not good. I know they're cute, but you are not letting. She can't breathe. You have all this, all these panties and the labial folds and, and just everywhere. Just I just wear briefs, regular briefs, bikini briefs, or even if you want to wear the good old grannies. Don't be afraid. You can always get you a pair of nice quality granny panties that actually fit. They don't have to be loose and look like granny panties. They could just be the kind that uh, just, you know, just not bunch inside your vagina. That's not good. I hate thongs. I hate boy shorts. Anything that's going to be all up in there is not going to be good for me. To me, it produces more moisture, sweat, and it just causes, you could throw your pH off. And to me, it's just, it doesn't allow your vagina to breathe. How can it breathe when you have a fabric that's so cl it's clinging up in there? You're walking, you're sitting, all this. Like, no. So I would suggest, you know, some type of brief or a cute little granny panty. <laughs> that uh, just, just, you know, that's just a regular panty that does not go all in your vagina. Oh, and I want to, I kind of forgot to talk, talk about this. So, um, when it comes to like intimacy with your partner and how changing your diet can really up your, like level up your yoni game, it makes you taste better when you eat healthy. When you're out here just eating anything again, y'all can say all day you haven't gotten any complaints and all that kind of stuff, but it's probably because the guy you deal with doesn't eat, doesn't deal with women who eat healthy diets. So he's only used to what he knows. And I'm not saying to base your hygiene routine based off of a man. What I'm saying to you is, is that a lot of women will use it as a, a, um, a marker. It's okay, I'm good because he said so. You know, he ain't complaining. He love it down there. But imagine how much better it would be if you were to actually eat healthier. Imagine the difference in taste and smell and freshness that it would be if you were to eat healthy and drink more water so yeah let that be your motivation let eating healthy <laughs> that may be one of your motive other than being healthier if that if you want that to be your motivation let that be your motivation y'all to just be able to snatch some souls out here you know with the, with the fresh body by eating healthier all right so another thing is if your man has a poor diet if he's drinking a lot if he eats horrible and you're having unprotected sex and you're essentially even if you're eating healthy you just really you doing all this work but nothing because you just letting his little acidic pee pee go all up in there ruining all this hard work so i mean you can't make your man eat healthy if you already if you're already with him and he doesn't have those habits you know, of course, you encourage him by doing the do, eating healthy 
and encouraging him to but you i would suggest if your man doesn't eat healthy then you should probably use condoms because if you're having unprotected sex with him i'm pretty sure your ph is getting thrown off left and right all the time because ph can get thrown off even if your man does have a healthy uh, healthy uh, diet so especially when his diet is unhealthy he's definitely throwing your ph off all right so just be careful of who what kind of pps y'all letting go into your sacred space and make sure that pp is a healthy pp not just std free but also kill all these you know toxic foods and chemicals and all that kind of stuff and make sure that whatever you know he's why he's rinsing that thing good and you know he don't have no soap residue on there from whatever men's body wash he's using and then getting it inside of you so just you know talk to him about that kind of stuff don't be afraid to talk to your partner about that he wants it to be good and fresh and tight and all that kind of stuff but he needs to be helping you maintain that all right um of course uh fruit juice so fruit juice is good especially when it's a natural fruit juice but um uh, like soda and alcohol and all this kind of stuff like that cut back on that because sugar of course is going it's horrible for the reproductive system repro reproductive system for women so cut back on that i don't drink soda and i drink very little alcohol i used to be on the alcohol but it tore my body apart mm -mm, i'm not going back to that life <laughs> So I suggest that you, you know, limit your alcohol and limit your soda usage and limit your fruit juice. You should be consuming more water than anything. And a juice should be, you know, an addition, a treat after you consume what you need to consume. And sometimes I consume, you know, juice before I even consume all of my water for the day but i make sure i get that water in and if i don't for some reason i feel so horrible and i notice a difference so it's just something you just have to do you you have to make it a habit you have to put that first in your priorities of your health another thing i would say is yoni steaming so i yoni steam at home i have my own yoni steam seat and i buy my yoni steam steam herbs from nini nini fem health it's i think it's nini fem health or nini organics one of the two but I, I usually order her um, Yoni Steam Herbs. and But of course, it's so many different places you can get Yoni Steam Herbs from. Just make sure the person is reputable. And giving you some quality herbs, the right kind of herbs. But I like to steam after, um, after menstruation. It's a really good time to steam. If you're having some type of vaginal issues, it's a good time to steam after sex. Maybe not right after sex, but maybe like the day after. It's a good time to steam just to get everything back together, to detox the womb. It helps with fibroids. It helps with cervical issues. It helps with heavy menstrual bleeding and cramps. It helps with odor, endometriosis, all this kind of stuff like that. So yes, we want to definitely yoni steam. And I use a yoni oil from time to time. Um, a yoni oil is just like herb, a herbal oil. That it's like a pH maintenance. It's pH maintenance. So it does, for me, it doesn't, like if you're having an issue, it doesn't completely heal that issue if you're having like BB or yeast infections, but it helps to prevent it if you're using it consistently. And I use a Yoni oil, Yoni oil from Nini Organics. And I also have, well, I don't have, but I know that like, I think it's called Essentially True. I think that's a shop, uh, like a Yoni wellness shop. It's a bunch of them on Instagram. The internet, you can find all kinds of shops that have yoni oil. Another one of my tried and true, uh, tried and true, um, like medicinal, um, medicinal items I use for yoni health is boric acid suppositories. And I know I've read women, boric acid, you know, like, so I, I understand a lot of people are ignorant to things they don't know, but ladies, you're walking around here with issues because you're so closed-minded. Do your research. If someone's giving you advice on something, do your research. Don't be so quick to say something, you know, out of ignorance. Because it could be the very thing that helps you. Now, we all have choices. But boric acid suppositories are awesome. They're awesome. They help cure BV, bad, uh, bad, uh, BV and um, yeast infections and all that kind of stuff so so quickly and so easily and so gently truthfully and um you should definitely research it and 
A lot of women need to incorporate that in their stash because they'll go and run to the doctor. Or they trust the doctor so much before they trust herbs or natural remedies. And if you tried it and it doesn't work for you, then also tea tree oil suppositories could work. Or probiotic suppositories can also work. Yogurt could work for some women. But the boric acid suppositories work very well. I use... I forgot. It's, it's boric something from... It's a... It's a hmm, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's Borg Fresh or something like that from uh, Amazon that I've been using for a while now. But Nene Fem Health and a bunch of different other boutiques sell them. Amazon has it. Um, they may even have it at Walmart now because Walmart definitely has some stuff. Right? Like Walmart has like the pH Refresh. It's expensive as heck there though but you have it if you have to run to the store and get something if your ph gets gets thrown off mm. oh another thing is to always be aware of how your vagina smells you should be checking your vagina with clean hands of course when you get out the tub you know when you're using the bathroom when you use the bathroom you should be able to smell it when you're sitting on the toilet but when you get when you get out the tub or get out of the bathtub or the shower you should check down there. And if you don't smell completely clean and fresh, you need to get back in there and, and do it again. And do it again and do it again. If you find yourself in to keep doing it, it's an issue. All right? But check and make sure. Don't just wash and get out the tub and then it's just that on that. Make sure you're good. Make sure you're clean properly. Make sure you got everything. Because if you're smelling down there after you got the tub and it still doesn't smell fresh, that means you didn't properly clean. You need to go back and do it again. Oh, and also keep a track of like um, how your discharge looks, how it smells, the texture, all that kind of stuff. You should know what your normal vaginal discharge looks like. You should know what something's abnormal looks like. You know, we should know this at this point. Now, if you're a teenager, if you're having color discharge, smelly discharge, super thick discharge, it's an issue. It should be like a cloudy looking, you know, with no smell. Or even I've noticed that maybe it smells like yogurt plain yogurt but really not much of a smell that's normal anything that's colored green pink red brown you know thick chunky pasty or cottagey cottage cheesy that's an issue mm. I want to also say to make sure that your man is washing his hands and of course you make sure your only clean hands are touching your vagina when you're being intimate with your dude get make him get up and wash his hands so many men don't want to do that because they're lazy they get mad and they're all in this in the moment and they're getting upset and it's just like then you have to deal with the after effects of your man not taking the time to make sure he's coming to you clean and men don't understand you know once he touches the doorknob the light switch the cell phone the remote you know, all this stuff, he's still touching you and you're letting him go all inside your body and those surfaces have so much bacteria on them and you're wondering why your pH gets thrown off every time you have sex. Make sure his hands are clean. And if he won't clean his hands, it doesn't matter how much of a temper tantrum he throws, don't let him do it. Don't let him do it, ladies, okay? <laughs> don't let him do it. So I think I have two more. This video is long. Ugh, I'm sorry. But um, herbs and supplements. So I use a lot of herbs and supplements for digestion and just for overall body freshness. So like chlorophyll is an herb that I use or a supplement I use. And it just helps. It's an internal body deodorizer. And I like to use that. And I use probiotics for, for women for the vagina and the digestive tract as well as some other herbs. But those are the two, two ones that I use. Um, or supplements that I use um, specifically that can help the vagina. Probiotics and chlorophyll. And last but least, if you're a person who suffers from like musty vagina smell, like if you get like sweaty and like on the sides of your vagina, the labial folds, it gets musty in there, then I like to use lemon juice as a natural deodorizer. You can like get a cotton ball 
or a little spray bottle and just spray or wipe those in between those little crevices of course not getting inside of the vagina but just on the outside and that will uh, make it make the skin acidic so that the bacteria can't grow right there and it won't cause that odor so it's like a natural deodorizer but those are my tips and tricks and if you would like to um like a product recommendation of specific products i use just let me know um and i will be glad to make another video of that as well so thank you all for sitting through this long video i'm gonna have to edit this down <laughs> i didn't mean for it to be this long but i had a lot of information i wanted to give you all all right y'all see you later bye bye